Hi, I'm Matt Velasquez, and I am an undergraduate researcher and documentary filmmaker here at the University of Arizona. Today, I'm going to be talking about lenses and cameras, and I'll also give some suggestions in what would be best for using the ABC tracker. Let's get to it. So first off, lenses are kind of broken up into two different categories for the most part. There's wide angle lenses and telephoto lenses. So anything that's 35 millimeters or less is considered a wide angle lens. Anything larger than 35 millimeters is considered a telephoto lens. So what is millimeters? Millimeters is what's used to measure how you could say zoomed in a lens would be. So if you have a lens that is, let's say 100 millimeters, the image is gonna be a lot more zoomed in than let's say something that's 18 millimeters. So 18, a wide angle lens, and 100 millimeters, a telephoto lens. There are also other subcategories of lenses. Let's say like a macro lens, this 100 millimeter macro lens. What makes this a macro lens is its minimum focusing distance. What that means is you could get closer to your image and it would still you would be able to still get it in focus. Let's say using other lenses, not considered macro, you would have to actually probably go a lot farther to be able to get that image in focus. So when using, when filming insects, let's say for the ABC tracker, you wanna look for a macro lens. So when shooting with these different lenses, let's say like this 100 millimeter macro lens or this 18 millimeter wide angle lens, there's gonna be a different depth of field. When you're shooting with a lens that's a lot more zoomed in or has a higher millimeter value, the depth of field is going to be a lot more shallow, meaning less things are going to be in focus, which is what you don't want when shooting small insects. You want a very deep depth of field. That way you could get a lot more of the insects in focus at one time. So how do you get that really deep depth of field? Each lens has an associated aperture value. What an aperture is, is how wide the lens is open and how much light could get in. The wider the aperture, the more light comes in, which is a good thing, but the depth of field gets a lot more shallow. You want to go for the deeper depth of field. So what you need to do is decrease the aperture. And most of those, is, you're able to do that you know, by twisting. Usually there's a, a piece here that you can twist that'll uh, decrease the aperture value. So again, to get the deepest depth of field, you want to shrink the aperture value, which means you're going to have to increase the amount of light in your scene. So maybe instead of using one light bulb, you may need to use two light bulbs but you get that deeper depth of field and more insects or other organism you might be filming in focus. In addition to the aperture, these values are measured in something called f-stops in photography. So let's say this lens particularly has an f-stop of 1.8. So that means the aperture is gonna be very, very large. I could open it up very, very large. What you want is something higher than that. Let's say the, the most you could close this aperture is uh, f-16. But at f16, you're not going to get a lot of light in, so that's not a realistic uh, value you could have it at. You'd like to have it at f16 because the depth of field is going to be a lot deeper, but realistically, you probably have to go for something lower. Realistically, you just kind of got to play with your light, your light setup. How much light do you put on the organism without disrupting it, or how much can you not to be able to get the best deep depth of field possible? So now we're going to go over different camera options when choosing a camera for the ABC tracker. When selecting a camera, you have to keep in mind crop factor and its usefulness or not usefulness when shooting. So there's a couple different ones. The first one is something called full frame. That's going to be your widest type of camera. Any lens you put on there is going to be wider than let's say something called an APS-C crop factor. That takes your image and makes it at 1.5. And I'm going to go ahead and crop this video so you can see what I'm talking about. So it goes full frame, APS-C, that means it's going to be again a little bit more zoomed in if you use the same lens and then there's something called a micro four thirds which is even more cropped in that's about two to two point three times more zoomed in than let's say the full frame what we shoot here in the lab and what i would personally recommend especially when shooting insects would be the panasonic gh3 this is the camera i shoot with because of its crop factor it's very useful for me when i shoot with insects so let's say if i were to use a hundred millimeter lens with a full frame, I'm only gonna get, I'm actually gonna get double the wideness of uh, of the shot than I would if I were to shoot with the GH3. 
meaning that instead of buying a 200 millimeter lens, I could use this 100 millimeter with the GH3 and still get that same zoomed in uh, photo that I want, or video in this case.